And as we enter game number two, or does it feel like nine, <laughs> of this series, we have spawning in the bottom location, representing evil geniuses, getting a little bit of deja vu here, we have Stefano, who is 1-0 up in this best of three against the Purple Zerg, spawning in the 11 o'clock position. The only Russian left in the tournament. His life is on the line here because it is the lower bracket. If the loser of this does bow out of the qualifier, it is live Zerg. So a very, very entertaining game number one. Uh, live Zerg coming in on Daybreak with approximately 20 million Banelings. Or as someone in the chat so aptly noticed, the Targa Banelings did come in. But Stefano defended like an absolute champ. He lost his Evolution Chamber. He lost his Baneling Nest. He lost a Queen to Banelings. That's a lot of Banelings to take down a Queen there. And unfortunately, Live Zerg uh, was unable to hold uh, the counterattack after Stefano defended that so brilliantly. Uh, teching up to get Infestus first. The first Roach push didn't win him the game, but the second Roach push with Infestor backup most certainly did. And now we have Stefano. He's going to be going for his pool on 15 here. <coughs> and Livezerk is instead going to be going for a 15 hatch. So uh, this could just be two versions of the same build in the sense that in a minute or two's time, they'll effectively have evened out to the same thing. Because with that earlier pool, of course, Stefano is also able to get his queen out earlier. So that helps compensate for the earlier hatch. Um, but at least you have a little bit of a difference of opinion. Of course, these players mirrored each other's builds to the T in game number one. Stefano instead is uh, going for his pull into hatch like he did in game one, but Livezerg is going to mix it up with a hatch first. Looks like he's going to be going into hatch uh, into gas pool, so he will be able to get a little bit earlier uh, map control, or at least that's his intention there, assuming that he uh, Stefano hasn't taken that gas. And of course, the Overlook hops in now and sees that he has it. So Livezerg will be able to get a faster Zergling speed than Stefano, and as a result, he'll be able to exercise that map control, maybe get a link into the main base of Stefano to scout faster, and uh, also without the links of Stefano catching up to him. And, of course, if he tries to come in with some sort of uh, hidden Zergling kind of timing and that somehow manages to evade the vision of these overlords, he's also able to sneak in that much more as well. Stefano moving back with this overlord because he wants to know when this gas geyser has mined 100 whether or not Livezerg is going to be keeping three drones on this gas, or whether he's going to reduce it down to one, or whether he's going to take all of them off. So Stefano will be able to get that information. We are reaching 100 gas now. Livezerg immediately starts his Zergling speed, and note that three drones are still on gas. So Stefano can see that. In the meantime, Stefano is mining his gas as well, so he's going to be able to get up to Zergling speed just that little bit slower than his opponent, about 25 in-game seconds in it. Both sides have their natural expansions now up and are going to be grabbing queens for those. So let's see what happens going into the mid-game here as both players look to settle in. In the meantime little bit of a Zergling scout there. So nothing too out of the ordinary from Live Zerg. Now he's going to benefit slightly earlier from the Zergling speed, but not in time for these two Zerglings to benefit from it, unfortunately, as they reach Stefano's base long before speed is complete. Both sides once again going for the Bailing Nest here. Now are we going to see, like in game number one, um, Live Zerg go for effectively a pure Baneling army? And, oh, 18 Zerglings are on the way here, and Stefano is getting that Sim City. He has a Creep Tumor spread out here as well, so he has a little bit more notice, too. Baneling Nest about to complete, Spinecrawler about to complete. I would not be surprised to see Evo Chambers pop out here. Now, this area of the base is a little bit more difficult to wall off and defend, admittedly. And, oh, Stefano does see that the Zerglings are incoming from Live Zerg. So two games in a row, he's going to be going for this ultra-aggressive strategy, but bear in mind, it really didn't work out for him last time around. Stefano has a defensive bailings already morphed in. The work account is 34 to 33 in favor of Stefano at the moment. And uh, Live Zerg has two bailings out here at the front, but they're getting caught out of position. The rest of those Zerglings 
Unfortunately, I'm getting caught out just a bit rough and He does manage to sneak in a bunch into the main base, though, and this could be the break that Live Zerg needed. The Banelings are dead, but the Zerglings are inside the main mineral line. Is he going to be able to target down a couple of workers? Yes, he is, but Stefano with the defensive Banelings taking out a decent portion of those links. Only one worker killed so far. Live Zerg has to do more with this. Both sides starting their layer behind this, by the way, trying to get some Banelings stuck in, in the smoke there. And there we go, Stefano actually, oh, okay, he does actually see just for a split second those Banelings, and oh, they get cancelled actually, and Livesar's going to be able to use these links as a scout. Now, he has been droning up pretty hard behind this, because he doesn't want to just auto-lose like he did in that last game to early attack from Stefano. The problem is, though, we have double Evo Chamber, uh, we have got the layer on the way for Stefano, and admittedly, Livesar managed to get the layer at the same time this game, but Stefano was always just that little bit more ahead. Uh, in that work account, and he has got all of, uh, well, Livesark has all of his gases down, but Stefano has been mining his gases a little bit longer than Livesark as well. So uh, let's see what he ends up doing with those there, and he's actually going to be using his extra mining while Livesark was sending those lings in to try and destroy Stefano to go for a quick third hatch. And in fact, both players are going to be doing that, and Livesark actually goes straight for the Spire which is an interesting choice. He hasn't actually got a Roach Warren down, but Stefano does have the Roach Warren. So it's uh, it's quite likely that we could see Stefano go into Infestation Pit shortly as well. Let's see if and when that ends up getting put down. 1-1 one, one on the way for Stefano. He must be feeling pretty confident after that engagement. He is now ahead by a total of 10 workers. That's what happens when early game aggression doesn't work out for you. Uh, except in this game, we're not going to see a massive lead in tech from Stefano because both sides got their layers simultaneously, but we are still going to see him be economically very, very comfortable indeed. And lives are actually coming in here with round number two. Stefano here with a couple of defensive bailings and a queen. Is it going to be enough, though? Keeping those Banelings alive, doing a good job there. And the rest of them trying to pick apart the third base. The excellent job microing those Zerglings. And Live Zerg might be able to force, yes, he does, Safado to cancel that third base of his. That is great news for Live Zerg here. But now we have him surrounding the Queens as well. And despite a transfuse, two of the Queens go down, three of the Queens go down. That's actually a major victory for Live Zerg. But the problem is Stefano now is Roaches out. And he is on up to 101 supply versus 78 of Livesark, so can Stefano do something on this counter-attack? Livesark actually got a decent amount of damage done. And he has his third base house, and he has the Mutalisks on the way. A couple of defensive Banelings at the third as well. This is actually starting to look a lot better for Livesark than it did five minutes ago. That follow-up attack from him did a huge dent to Stefano, but now he has to hold the counter, and this is what I'm really worried about. Yes, the Mutas are going to be out on the field. You can see them here already, but look at this. Stefano has got what I like to call the Honey Badger Roaches. They don't care about the Mutas. They're just going to march straight in and do as much damage as they can. Now, they oh dear, all of the Banelings going down on a single Roach there. Can Stefano either kill off this hatchery or get a lot of damage done to Livesark before the Mutas clean up the roaches? That is going to be the test here. Effectively a test of time, and it looks like the Zerglings are doing a great job of delaying the roaches until the Mutas are able to clean up, and Livesark is going to be able to secure this third base. And Stefano will not pick apart this third hatchery as long as the Mutas target down those roaches. Still with a couple more streaming in here, and oh! Uh, he's actually abandoning the hatch at the moment because he knows that the Zerglings will be able to clean that up, so that's fine. And now the Mutas are moving out across the map. Let's take a look at what Stefano is doing in his main base. In the meantime, he has gone straight up to the Hydralis Den, so he has not gone for the Infestation Pit. He's opted for a different option instead this game, going immediately up to Roach Hydra. And Live Zerg really wants to put the pressure on against his third base. He might take just a massive advantage here because the Hydras are only just coming out and ready, but there isn't much uh, in front of them. Only four Hydras there just now before the rest join them, and a couple of them getting picked off from the Mutalisks. The third base is going to stay alive, Stefano does have enough Hydras now, in addition to the Queens, to secure against the Mutas, but Livesark is going to be the world's most annoying player for as long as he possibly can with these Mutalisks. They will be able to uh, try and harass Stefano as much as possible and prevent Stefano from moving out across the map. In the meantime, just more Roaches, clear with Constitution, and 1-1 one, one on the way from Livesark as well. In Stefano's cap, he actually already has 1-1 one, one already complete, so... Uh, he has a massive upgrade advantage at the moment because plus two is actually further along than plus one is for Livesark. 
but he's being pinned back to his base as it currently stands by the Mutalis, and he did get his third base destroyed once. So the supplies as it currently stands are a little bit higher for Live Zerg, 120 to 110. We see the work supply is 63 to 50 in favor of Live Zerg, but Stefano is ahead substantially on upgrades at the moment and might be able to make that count if he gets enough hydras with this unit composition here to fend off any sort of muta play. And that looks like exactly what he's doing at the moment. The Overseer from Leipzig sees that there is a stream of units coming out through the middle of the map. And as a direct response, we have Mutas now popping out, trying to do uh, some harassment damage while these units get forced out through the middle. Picking apart the Queens actually might be a great idea, but Transfuse is coming down from Stefano. He is forced to pull back with the Hydralis, and the Queens actually killing off a decent number of the Mutas, but is it going to be enough? There are still six of them remaining. They're going to be moving towards the main base, and Stefano continuing with his push here. Now, he is down in supply as far as workers and as far as army is concerned, but this Roach Hydra, especially with plus two about to complete, could end up being a deadly force. Let's see if Live Zerg can hold it. He has superior numbers, but zero, zero upgrades. He will have one, one in about 10 seconds, which means he will have it in time for this engagement to occur. That's going to be pivotal for him. These Mutalists continuing to try and do some light damage, and finally he gets... Oh no, he's actually not getting any of those drones at the moment. Great micro from those Queens, and now Stefano has to force this engagement. The number of workers killed from Live Zerg is going up to 17. And uh, Stefano needs to make or break. He's shot up to 152 supply. A lot of units coming up for Stefano right now. He's actually dropping back to the middle of the map just for a while here. Not 100% confident just yet. He's bringing a whole bunch of overlords with this uh, army as well. Possibly trying to make lives or think he's going to drop. Uh, let's see. Or they're just going to be for getting overlord speed is actually in place. So, uh, but lives are coming in with a decent god game against Stefano. Stefano technically has more units out here, but he has got that plus two attack. And these Hydras are doing so much damage in the back, but lives are coming in with a superior concave now. And the Roaches are able to get in against the Hydras. They do so much DPS, but they're also so squishy. And only 80 hit points to a Roaches, 145. And Stefano is getting beaten back here. Lives are, is going up to a 45 now, 50 supply lead. <coughs> and it looks like lives are, might be able to level the series up one all and force E.G. Stefano to play a game number three and potentially face elimination from the Intel Extreme Masters qualifier here. 145 supply versus 98, a healthy third base versus a third base that has been troubled without too many drones on it at the moment. And uh, Live Zerg is looking to try and bring it home. Stefano potentially has more DPS in his army thanks to those Hydralisks, but just not enough road support despite the upgrade advantage. And Live Zerg stuttering those roaches straight into the heart of the army, wanting to take out any chance Stefano has at resisting this push here. And he is doing a grand job of it. 158 supply versus 100, moving straight into the natural expansion, not caring for the third base. He knows that's just minerals and not the real army. Stefano pulling out all of his drones here to try and assist in this defense, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. More units being streamed across the map from Livezerg now, purple on purple. The entire map is full of it, and uh, Stefano's creep spread only masking the fact that these units are going to get into his base very quickly. Well played, and Livezerg levels the series one to all. One to all? One all, even.